If you're air cooling the T1 V2, you're gonna want a low profile cooler. Now you can adjust the spacing for your CPU. That's gonna be at the expense of your GPU's clearance. So let's go ahead and take a look at a couple here that might be a good match for the T1 V2. Welcome to Machines and More. Sorry for the brief lapse there. I did take some time and iron out some things in the studio, fix down the lighting, audio, all that good stuff. And uh, maybe we'll do a video on that soon. So hopefully the shot looks uh, good now. But today we'll continue our coverage here on the T1 V2, specifically air cooling. Last time we took an intro look to performance that you could expect from the stock AMD cooler and the Ryzen 5600. And we concluded that with, well, if you're gonna look to do anything all core intensive, then yeah, an air cool upgrade, it's definitely going to help. I've got two coolers that I'm looking at today that fit the height constraints more or less here at big thanks to ID Cooling and Scythe for sending over a few new goodies for us to check out here. Now there are a few caveats and I will discuss uh, with regard to fit, uh, but I think you'll be able to find a cooler here that works well for your particular setup. So just a quick refresher here, the way I have the case set up initially for the test build, it had about 60 millimeters or so of air cooler clearance, and that is a bit limiting, but you can space it out as needed. The space for your GPU, it does decrease by the exact same amount that you gain, so you do have to be in a happy place with respect to your GPU's cooler size in order for that uh, to actually materialize. So for the best compatibility, you still really should be sticking to, you know, no more than two, 2.25 slots of GPU spacing. And uh, for this round of tests, I did shift the motherboard out one centimeter. So in terms of absolute clearance, we have about 70 millimeters here. And here's uh, where the form or the shape of the cooler actually does make an impact. So while the first cooler I tested here, uh, this is the heatsink for the uh, new IS55 from ID Cooling. And yeah, the heatsink is 40 millimeters tall. The total height, it's about 55 millimeters tall. 55 millimeters tall uh, for a 120 millimeter cooler. The shape of the cooler placed the fan under the support bar here for the T1 V2 and that ate away at the clearance pretty significantly since it just so happens that the bar, it's pretty beefy there. So unfortunately that did mean I had to space out in order to accommodate it, which it's a total shame since based on the numbers alone, it could have worked with one uh, full 25 millimeter thick fan and uh, because rotating the heatsink the other direction, it didn't clear the rear IO cover either. So this was really the only way. Now, if you have a low rear IO assembly on your motherboard, you might just be able to get it to work that way. And you'll have a lot of clearance uh, and you'll, you'll be able to fit that 25 millimeter fan. But with the way mini ITX boards are these days though, I think that's gonna be a tough uh, prospect. A pretty neat cooler otherwise, so it's super height optimized here. I mean, it's, it's so thin, the bottom, Everything is only as thick as it needs to be while putting as much heat fin space as possible. The cutouts are also quite generous and I think the heat sink, it does, it, uh, I measured it in about exactly 40 millimeters. I did have to run a Corsair LPX RAM kit to clear it, but for this size class, this type of case, it's a pretty normal concession there. But what's really cool about this cooler is that it does expand the surface area on the top relative to something pr previous like the IS60. And uh, it's practically the entire footprint of a 120 millimeter fan here. And fan-wise, it does ship with ID's ARGB Slim 120, which is a decent fan. I think it's a similar one that ships with the IS60 EVO, which we've also tested a lot here with different cases here on the channel. But this one also approves upon that design since this one is fully compatible with the stock AM4 backplate now, which was a concern I had previously with the uh, IS60 EVO. So installation for this is really easy. It also does have LGA 1700 compatibilities, so this would be a great candidate for something like a 12400 if you're thinking of going Alder Lake. This one here is the black version, which I think looks really sweet in this case, but if you were thinking about doing a white build, also white fan version, uh, the heatsink gets the original silver, but uh, man, just a fan that's different here. And of course the, the heatsink finish. You got five heat pipes, nickel plated base plate. It's not polished shiny, but it seems to work just fine. I, I like this guy because it's so compact. It's such a neat looking cooler. 
Um, the other cooler most of you are familiar with is the Scythe Big Shuriken 3, which also it's been on this uh, channel. It's had its fair share of appearances. But this one is the Rev B, and that change here is to the fan. So with the redesigned fan frame on the slim Kase Flex 2, Scythe has made this a 67 millimeter tall cooler instead of uh, roughly 69 or so previously. So realistically with this case, the extra clearance, you know, if you've got 70, right, it's just gonna be for additional fudge factor. But it actually per proved to be pretty important here because of my board choice. And I did try this one with the ASUS X570 ITX since my B550 ITX croaked. So I've got that one out for RMA, but the M.2 heatsink on this X570 ITX board is really, really tall. So the only way I could get it to fit required removing the top of that heatsink. So while with most boards and low profile RAM, you can get the cooler to clear it without any issue. You do run into the same clearance issue with the support bar on the T1 V2, right? So short of pushing it out another 10 millimeters, which you don't have at this point with a two slot card, this is the way it has to fit. And there are plenty of boards that will fit uh, the, the, the cooler, but you do have to gauge how high your M.2 heatsink is and proceed with caution and with some of the super overbuilt boards for Alder Lake ITX, that's just not gonna happen. And here, even with removing that M.2 heatsink, it still pushed up the uh, Big Shuriken 3's heatsink a bit. The results were okay though. And I don't think it adversely affected the cooling, but it's still it's still unstable. I'm not sure, you know, maybe one day the contact gets loose, right? So at least I think the results, they're still valid here. I just don't know for a long term. Uh, same number of heat pipes here, five total, much bigger heat sink on this cooler. And uh, we'd expect it to be the superior cooler because of that, even though it's uh, tighter to install. So testing data was gathered here with the Ryzen 5600. I think this or the 5600X, 12400, 12400F from Intel. These are very suitable chips to be pairing with these smaller coolers. And I tested this a couple ways just to give you enough context. First was just with a fixed voltage and clock. You got 4,600 megahertz here and 1.25 volts. According to Ryzen Master, I saw a PPT of 95 watts at this OC. And with the fans noise normalized, still got uh, the two Fantex T30s here, but now at only 1,000 RPM. I'm getting a total system noise of a little bit less than three decibels above the noise floor. The Big Shuriken 3 does have a good edge here, around about five degrees. Although performance here for both coolers, it's fine even with the all-core overclock here. If we take a look at the boost clocks, which you can expect to hit with PBO, which is how I think most folks should be running Ryzen 5000, and a curve optimizer setting of negative 15, well, your two coolers here are pretty close. They are more or less the same here. And there's gonna be some minute run-to-run -run variants with the algorithm, and considering that most likely for this level of CPU, because you chose a CPU, your multi-core process isn't gonna be mission critical. I think with either of these coolers, you're gonna get what you can out of uh, the chip that you have here that's suitable to run with these coolers. Uh, but with the Big Shuriken 3, it's gonna have a little bit more headroom to either reduce the fan to get less noise, or if you wanna do a little bit of pushing, you can get a little overclock out of it. So if you replace the fan on the IS55 with a Noctua Slim, and I only tested it with the IS55 since in the past, swapping the side fan, didn't seem to be worth it. And you can squeeze just a little bit more performance out of it, but it's not really uh, you know, significant. But I think here if for the ID cooler, you do get quite a decent amount, uh, although I think you are still limited by the size of the heat sink. So that's worth considering. How about that GPU? Well, in the stock cooler testing, the spacing was 10 millimeters more for the card. And that allowed quite a bit more space between the divider and the card leading to very good thermals for the card. Again, this is the Founders Edition card here, so it does need that flow through section to be breathing. Uh, but here with the Big Shuriken 3, for example, uh, giving the reduced space for the card, it does result in an increase in the card's temp. Although you got a huge, huge drop in the CPU temps, this is a lower utilization scenario. So that CPU temp, it's close to uh, idle temps, but it's still apples to apples between the two. So big gap. So between these two coolers, it's gonna come down to what board you're using, because I'll be honest, even though I can get the Big Shuriken 3 to fit on this board, and in this case, even though it works fine for now, and it's gonna be the better cooler in terms of performance, I'm not sure I would run it like this long term, both for the sake of the M.2, because it's there's no heatsink on it now, and the wonky mount on the CPU. So if you've got a more muscular board like this one, 
I definitely seek out the IS-55. I think you can get either one now fairly easily like on outlets like Amazon. So I'll leave links down below. Uh, $40 US for the IS-55, uh, quite reasonable, and $50 for the BS-3. So the IS-55 does leave a little bit of room if you want to spring for that fan upgrade too. So overall, I think air cooling in the T1 V2, it's going to be just fine. Uh, make sure you pick a suitable CPU and cooler and you know, you're all set. So hope you found that informative and helpful. So please give a like and please, please subscribe if you haven't already. Thanks for watching today.